Yes, so yes, so this is Frackers Mo Fire, Mo Fire, Fuka Fuka. We for women, there we up in here. Yes, we're gonna be very snappy. We're gonna be talking about Reno Omokri and the fight that he's been having with the obedient crew. That's Peter Obi's people. Let me tell you something. Reno Omokri is a trained lawyer who just figured out that he could be making a lot more money playing the political hack for the PDP and for Atiku and also being a social media influencer. So he's doing a great job at it. He's doing whatever he could just to get that attention because the more attention you get, the um, the better your pay grade and also the more attention you get from the PDP or whichever political party or principal, as they call them, that you're trying to get the attention from. The way they set up the algorithm for these social media um, platforms is in such a way that the more people respond to your post, the more people respond to your craziness, the more people respond to those, the more money Reno or Mercury makes. So he figured that out. So he just comes up and he picks up, he picks on the people. And he knows that obe the, obe the so-called obedient people, Peter Obese people, are very active on social media. So whenever he wants some attention, he just grabs them by throwing a bomb somewhere. Like recently, he just started saying things about Peter Obi and people responded. And when they responded, he just changed it all around and said they're attacking him. And now he's saying his life is in danger. Reno or mockery and a lie. Your life no day for no danger. The man there for US, the chill. From the United States of America, he's thrown all that bomb over here. Because he knows what he's doing. It's very easy. We've seen a lot of them like that. The Nomalaya is like that. Uh, um, Femi Fanny Kayode is like that. FFK was being given a little bit of money from the PDP to stay alive on the social media because he was he's very active on social media. So they paid him to keep attacking Buhari and um, and the APC, and it was working. But after a while, being the party in opposition, the money wasn't coming forth as much. Wike was helping finance the PDP, but he was concentrating more on elections. He was trying to win more. Uh, uh, he was trying to win more elections in uh, Bini, in uh, Ekiti, different places. So they, they weren't paying their political hack workers on the internet. So people like um, the, uh, Femi Fanikao, they was losing money. Then this guy stepped in, Yaya Bello, started paying him and asked him to join the APC and he eventually did join the APC. So we do have some people who come up on social media and try to act like they're all for the people. They talk about social ills, uh, uh, things that are things that are affecting the people deeply in the social aspect. And then people kind of gravitate towards them because they are speaking on their behalf. They are taking out that frustration and they say, damn, this guy is talking for us. And they start to follow them, not knowing that this guy that's talking for you, just trying to get the attention from you so he can use it to make money politically later. So now he says he's a table shaker, table shaker. But then all of a sudden, when it was time to now shake the tables against the same people that messed up the country, he's trying to now stabilize the table for Atiku and then shake the table <laughs> for, um, what's his name, against Obi. And the people from Obi's camp are not having it. So now he's trying to switch it up again and claim that um, the people from Obi's camp were, he calls them former militants. So he's trying to say, because he had a big fight with the IPOB in the past when he said a few bad things about Igbos and uh, about Mazen Namdekano. So he's trying to say that the same experiences he's ha ex having now it's just the same experience he had when he attacked IPOB. So he's trying to say that the same IPOB crew now switched over and became obedient people. But if you if you if you look at that, you're gonna understand that that's a very bigoted statement, or that's a, bi a very bigoted mindset from uh, by Reno or Mercury. He's basically trying to say that Peter Obi's presidency is an it's an Igbo presidency. It's a militant Igbo movement that the IPOB now coded themselves and switched over to the obedient crew and all that. And it's a way of letting the Northerners know not to vote for Obi. It's a way of letting the 
uh, Westerners not to vote for Obi, but he's, uh, he's lying. Because definitely Obi's candidacy, he's been lucky so far. It's not defined by his Ebonist on his southeastern origin, no. Or his Christianity, no. People just like who what Obi represents. Obi represents the new Nigeria for most people. They see him as the new hope that they're having. A lot of people had been disaffection with politics. A lot of people had given up on politics. A lot of people never even wanted to vote again. But when they listen to Obi, they change their minds. They just want to try. They want. They, in fact, to most people, this current dispensation with Peter Obi is the last hope for Nigeria. They just want to give it one more shot. And if it doesn't work, a lot of people have threatened that they're going to just move on and they can't take it anymore because they feel like the country has been on a downward slope and it's going to continue that way if this doesn't happen, especially if OB supposedly wins but gets rigged out, then it's a problem. So please, I'm advising everybody that's following Reno Mercury, don't, don't pay him any mind anymore. He's just trying to make money. He's just trying to cause, uh, he's just seeking for attention. And a lot of the, time, a lot of the times, people like Dino Malaya, uh, Reno Mercury, they don't even have an agreement yet with people like Atiku. They're just hustling, trying to get Atiku's attention because they know that Atiku would throw out money. People like uh, Bola Tinubu would throw out money. People like uh, Kwan Kwanso have already uh, someone like Buba Galadima, who's a very old guy that, that's very active. <laughs> he talks badly about social media, but he's very active over there. And he's a mud slinger. He's like a mud wrestler up in there fighting it out with everybody. So Kwakwanso mostly built upon uh, regional sentiment, that's the North, and uh, religious sentiment, Islamic. And that's, that's wrong because you, you can tell from the interview that he had about why they're, uh, they're not teaming up with the... Uh, Peter Obi anymore. You could tell that they really believe that the Southeasterners don't deserve to rule. They believe that the Southeasterners are on the lower peck, lower, lower, lower echelon of politics in Nigeria and therefore have no business being the president and Kwan Kwaso being the vice president. That's going to be the talk of another, uh, on another day. We're going to talk about that on a different uh, segment. So my point again, pay less attention to these people. Don't attack them as much. And if you don't, if you do that, trust me, the attention goes down on their side, and you could keep uh, pushing for the candidate of your choice. Um, I'm I'm now speaking to the people, the obedient people. And um, another advice: if you are an obedient person and people are complaining that you guys are being so raw, naughty, or uh, you know, don't even pay them no mind, man. That's a strategy to slow you down. If you're very passionate about OB or whoever you support, stay that way. Don't let them knock you off of your rhythm. We for we with the fracas more fire. We still up in here. More fire. Fuka 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 fuka. <laughs> ah.